1971, The Omega Man hit the screens, bringing an intriguing mix of sci-fi and post-apocalyptic drama. Starring Charlton Heston, the movie unfolds in a desolate world ravaged by a deadly plague. The last apparent survivor, Heston's character, faces a battle for survival against a group of nocturnal mutants. But here's the hook, buckle up, because there are many surprising, amusing, and poignant facts about the making of this classic that you wouldn't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled for the unexpected. Have you ever found inspiration or felt a personal impact from this movie? Share your stories, or perhaps are there lesser known facts that have fascinated you about the Omega Man? We're all ears. Now, as you reminisce about this cinematic gem, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to it. Drop your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So stay tuned for the journey through behind the scenes trivia and share your own tales. There's more to discover and your stories might just be the missing piece. The Omega Man, a film from 1971, is a compelling entry into the apocalyptic sci-fi genre that explores the aftermath of biological warfare. The story revolves around the last surviving man in a world ravaged by a deadly contagion. The protagonist, portrayed by Chuck Heston, navigates the desolate streets of Los Angeles, encountering mutated beings referred to as the family. This group, infected by the germs, faces an inevitable demise, but attempts to dismantle remnants of the old technological world before succumbing. The movie delves into themes prevalent in the 1970s, a period marked by heightened awareness of environmental issues, the specter of biological warfare, and concerns about the potential self-destruction of society. As with other films of its time, The Omega Man poses the fundamental question, what are the consequences of our actions in the worst-case scenario? As the lone survivor contends with the infected family, a unique logic emerges, explaining the circumstances as a punishment for humanity's past mistakes. The narrative unfolds as a clash between the remnants of the old world, represented by the protagonist, and the dying new world of the family. This struggle becomes the last battle on Earth, providing a poignant reflection on the consequences of biological warfare. The film effectively explores the alternate reality of a parallel universe, presenting a scenario that could have unfolded differently for another Earth in a different universe. Watching it today allows viewers to consider the possibility of such a fate and fosters hope that our world and our universe will not meet a similar end. In summary, The Omega Man stands as a well-crafted and thought-provoking piece from the apocalyptic genre, reflecting the concerns of its era. Its exploration of the consequences of biological warfare and the clash between the old and new worlds contributes to its enduring relevance. Whether as a piece of cinematic history or an exploration of a parallel universe's fate, the film continues to captivate audiences, offering a timeless perspective on the potential outcomes of human actions. Filmed during October and November 1970, The Omega Man sought a suitable backdrop for its post-apocalyptic setting. Faced with the expense of constructing an abandoned metropolis, the production company discovered downtown Los Angeles devoid of shoppers on weekends, providing the desolate urban environment needed. The film's exteriors were primarily shot during these vacant periods. Charlton Heston, the lead in The Omega Man, received a salary of $300,000 as documented in David Shipman's great movie Stars the International Years. The economic details offer insight into the financial aspects of the film's production. In summary, The Omega Man's production unfolded against the backdrop of an abandoned urban landscape in downtown Los Angeles, with Charlton Heston commanding a salary of $300,000 for his role. The film's shooting schedule spanned October and November 1970, capturing the essence of its dystopian narrative. Tim Burton, known for his distinctive film style, has expressed a particular fondness for the movie, labeling it one of his favorites. In fact, he even declared it the one he would choose if stranded on a desert island. Notably, Burton collaborated with Charlton Heston, the lead in the film, in the later remake of Planet of the Apes. Heston's involvement in the project stemmed from his interest in a contemporary adaptation of the original novel. While returning to Los Angeles, he read the novel on a plane and was intrigued by the idea. Interestingly, he was oblivious to the fact that the story had already been adapted into a film titled The Last Man on Earth in 1964, starring Vincent Price. Richard Matheson, the author of the source material, took a pragmatic view of the adaptation. 
Despite the significant deviations from his book, Matheson expressed indifference, stating that the changes didn't bother him. In summary, Tim Burton's admiration, Charlton Heston's unawareness of the previous adaptation, and Richard Matheson's detachment from the changes provide additional layers to the narrative, showcasing the varied perspectives associated with its creation. Set in August 1977, the movie unfolds with Charlton Heston portraying the lead character, navigating the challenges of riding a motorcycle, a skill he had not previously mastered. The film strategically incorporates a theater scene featuring Woodstock on the marquee, showcasing footage from the successful Warner Brothers film. It's noteworthy that Warner Brothers also distributed it. This deliberate connection adds a layer of context to the narrative, underscoring its ties to a significant cinematic success. In essence, the storyline intertwines Heston's motorcycle debut and a cinematic nod to Woodstock, emphasizing the careful integration of elements in its production. These details provide a glimpse into the creation, offering insights into both the actor's challenges and the deliberate references embedded in the storyline, all against the backdrop of a dystopian 1977. The seamless incorporation of these elements reflects the meticulous planning behind the scenes, shaping it into a distinctive cinematic piece. Charlton Heston, seeking a notable director for The Omega Man, approached Orson Welles. Additionally, Heston played a pivotal role in casting Anthony Zerb after witnessing his theater performance. The film's plot revolves around a global pandemic triggered by germ warfare amid the China-Russia border conflicts of 1969. These real-world events lent a geopolitical backdrop to the apocalyptic narrative. The Omega Man's narrative intricacies are complemented by Charlton Heston's directorial pursuits and his influence on casting decisions, adding layers to the film's production dynamics. The geopolitical context adds a tangible realism to the fictional plague, reflecting the turbulent global events of the late 60s. This blend of real-world inspiration and creative choices underscores the film's unique genesis, providing a nuanced perspective on its creation. Crafted against the backdrop of historical tensions, the Omega Man's narrative intertwines reality and fiction, creating a distinct cinematic experience. In Hammer Films' earlier contemplation of Richard Matheson's book, they considered adapting it into a film titled The Night Creatures, personally written by Matheson. However, the project's graphic nature led to its abandonment. During the production of The Omega Man, Charlton Heston, as per his diary entries, expressed fatigue with his recurring action hero roles in his career at that time. The Fortreschon facade used in the film remains virtually unchanged on Warner Brothers Ranch Park Boulevard in Burbank. Easily visible on Google Maps 3D, it faces east-southeast. The Omega Man, a film shot against the backdrop of downtown Los Angeles in 1970, holds interesting behind-the-scenes details. The columned building set, now a part of Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, stands unchanged since its use in the film. Charlton Heston, the lead, revealed in his biography that director Segal frequently lost his temper with the crew during the production. Notably, Rosalind Cash, hesitant before her love scene with Heston, expressed discomfort, humorously noting, it feels strange to screw Moses. This scene gained attention as one of the early interracial kisses in cinema, a fact acknowledged by Whoopi Goldberg. The on-set dynamics and unconventional romantic elements contribute unique layers to the film's production. Directed by Boris Segal, The Omega Man's legacy includes not only its dystopian narrative, but also the enduring structure of the family's hive on the Warner Brothers Studios' back lot. Charlton Heston's revelations about Segal's temperament and the memorable love scene with Rosalind Cash offer glimpses into the challenges and dynamics shaping the movie. Crafted against the urban desolation of Los Angeles, the film stands as a distinctive cinematic piece. 